So we just finished up a great range weekend. Actually an entire week of awesome outdoor stuff, a lot of shooting. Jared from 2 Alpha Solutions, you might know him from the Sear Challenge Season 2. He was out here, he's a firearms instructor, a very knowledgeable dude. So he came out, gave us some extra tips to enhance our proficiency and great freaking week. But I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about first aid. We're not talking about apocalyptic stuff or bugging out. We're talking about standard range safety first aid. Thinking in the context of a basic firearms range, what kind of injuries are you gonna deal with? Well, your everyday basic boo-boos because you are running around, you're playing with toys. Standard boo-boos, that's normal. Most of those could be fixed with duct tape. But if we're talking about gunshot wounds or anything serious like that, there should be a couple things in your kit that you always bring with you to the range. So I know everybody's gotten into the IFAX and everything and carrying an entire first aid kit all the time. That's great. But I think there's one item that people are missing or at least is undervalued. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So this is part of the aid bag that I almost always have when going to the range. And I have a separate first aid bag for range days because I don't want to use stuff off of my gear or out of my camping bag. But these are just some things that I found are very helpful. So I do have duct tape in my bag. And yeah, you know, you pinch a finger or you got a minor cut or boo-boo, duct tape, electrical tape is fine. You'll be okay. Pretty much all you guys are going to recognize all this stuff. And we're not going to cover every item in here. I'm just going to go over what I think people are missing. So a splint for basic boo-boos sprains, twists. This is your standard muslin bandage. People call it an Israeli bandage. In the army, it's just our standard gauze. You can make pressure dressings, kind of, with it. But if you got have any kind of larger boo-boo, not major hemorrhaging, this is outstanding. Got a chem light for signaling. Combat gauze. Most of you guys know that. Very good for packing wounds. It does expand. I've used it in combat. An old school army olive drab cravat, or this is actually the old school field dressing. Many uses, and they actually give you a couple right there pictured. So lots of uses for that. And some of you may recognize this, a needle for chest needle decompression. Pretty important in some cases. So what am I missing guys? Go ahead and put it down there in the comments. And why isn't it in my range first aid kit? Well, because it is on me. And I'll tell you why. This bag is going to be sitting in my range bag somewhere back in the back. But what if I'm up on the firing line far away from this bag or we're doing some maneuver training and I don't have this bag on me? That's why this item is right here on my chest rig. Go ahead and call it out, guys. CAT, Combat Application Tourniquet. So a lot of people think this is for missing limbs, but what we learned going to Ramadi in 2005 is that this style of tourniquet can actually be applied for any kind of major bleeding. And so if you think about a possible gunshot on the range, knowing that you could put this on a limb and people aren't going to lose their limb, wouldn't this be one of your most important things on there? Because you can pack galls onto people, you could put bandages and everything on there. But if somebody has a pretty severe gunshot wound, which pretty much all gunshot wounds are severe. You throw that bad boy on there immediately and you've already begun treatment. And then you can start to triage and get that guy en route to the hospital. Now I got it, we're not all in firefights and we, we do have time to dress wounds properly. And here's how the army used to teach this. So 2003 when I came in, you went to your cravat first. You could do a standard dressing. You can actually use this to apply pressure. And then we got these. And so we were taught that this replaced the cravat and was a standard dressing, but could also be used as a pressure dressing. As we learned in combat, however, especially with gunshot wounds, this does not apply enough pressure. You could put this on as tight as you want, but it's still stretchy fabric. If you don't destroy it putting it on, you're gonna get it on as tight as you can. If it's a severe wound, it's gonna continue to bleed. Then we learned to use this to apply extra pressure. So you can roll this up in about an inch or two inch square, wrap it around there, put it on top of this, and then you can apply more pressure. So instead of putting this on, wasting time, 
and then you realize the guy still has to apply his own manual pressure. Then the army went to this. So if you had any kind of a hole, exit wounds almost all the time, there will be chunks of flesh missing in a gaping hole. So you pack the wound with that, you can go to that, and you can add this for pressure. So if you're dealing with an exit wound on a limb, you can pack it with that, and then you could go to that, and that should take care of your exit wound. And then you also have that for the severe bleeding. And if you think about a bullet wound, you're gonna have to deal with the exit wound almost all the time, but you could also put this on there for standard pressure, not cinch it down as a tourniquet, but you can actually use this for pressure on the direct wound. And so if you look at the modern research on pressure dressings and applying pressure to wounds, we have discovered that the more stuff, the more fabric and objects you put over a wound, the less likely it is to apply the pressure that you need. This is why we would put all this stuff on wounds in Iraq and put that on there and then we would still have to apply manual pressure. Well, as it turns out, we just had too much garbage in there. So the modern way of thinking is pack any holes with this stuff. This dresses up the hole, but it's not your pressure. And then this can go where you need the pressure. Or if the guy is bleeding severely and it is a horrible gunshot wound, that's mainly what the tourniquet's for. I think everybody on a range should have one of these on their person. Because guess what? If a dude gets shot, shoots himself, whatever, the first thing I'm going to do is run up to him and I'm going to ask for his tourniquet. Where is your tourniquet, dude? If he doesn't have one on his person, instead of flagging somebody down or trying to call one in or wasting time with fabrics, I'm going to go ahead and pull mine out, slap it on there. We'll get that major bleeding stopped and then we'll start to work on everything else from there. Priorities of work, guys. So that's it. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you thought down below. If you have some other tips like this that you think everybody should hear about, also put those down in the comment. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Out.